you ever thought there was a curse on your life, forget about it. Forget about it. For, I'd say, I'm forgetting about it. I'm going to whip it. Can't curse me no more. So I was just thinking about a couple of strategies. Now, Harrison, you're kind of like a big brain fellow from what I understand, right? And so you like you have strategies in your life, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's just say there was some bully or somebody like that that was picking on you, some really mean guy with long hair like me. Here's maybe what you should consider doing. Harrison, you've heard that you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love, that is unselfishly want the best for your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be the children of your Father in heaven. That's a little different thing than somebody's strategy. Maybe if somebody picked on us, we think we should just get mean to them. And that's what the devil wants us to do. And in 1 Peter 3, 9, it says, And never return evil for evil or insult for insult. But on the contrary, give a blessing. Somebody say blessing. And pray for one another's well-being. For you've been called for this very purpose, that you may inherit a blessing of well-being and happiness for yourself. Now, guys, that means Hezekiah... If Nathaniel ever gets mad at you and starts biting you on the ankle, don't bite him back, okay? Pray for him. Can you do that? Hezekiah, I'm going to pray for you while you bite me on the ankle. Let's pray right now. Lord God, I thank you for these guys. We can live by the powers of this world and the pain of this world and the, and the things that aren't going just great in this old world. Or we can live from heaven and we can do things your way. And Lord, this church right here, this church, your precious treasured people is going to live from the blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all give these guys a hand. Thank y'all so much. Y'all go do it. Thank you, Maxwell. Thank you, Caitlin. What wonderful leaders y'all are. To the glory of Almighty God in Jesus' name. Now, you heard those scriptures, but when's the last time you did it? It didn't say ignore the people that are your enemies. It said to get involved in their life. And pray for them. Well, that's still so fun. What if they do it again? It don't mean that you have to emotionally invest yourself, okay? But we come to this place, right, where the devil always wants to put a seed in the smack. He puts a seed of fear. He puts a seed of rejection, whatever that seed is. And our, our instinctive flesh reaction is just to bite, fight back. I've been hurt, so I'm finna hurt somebody else. And I got a, all kind of walls up. Is that what the Bible wants us to do? Is that what Scripture says to do? Now, you guys are the most humble people that I know. The people that go to this church and love each other in this church right here are the most humble and sweet people that I know. Give yourself a hand right here in Jesus' name. Let that hand come from heaven. Kathy Fain, you didn't give yourself a hand. Give yourself a hand right there. Okay. Oh, th smart Alec over there. You know what? I'm not going to. I'm not going to do anything but bless you for being that way, and love you a little bit more in Jesus' name, and give grace to all of us right here. Ah, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can live in that kind of blessing. So, in other words, when evil comes at us, other parts of the Scripture say, "Rejoice and be glad." When people say all kind of mean and cruel things against you. For great is your reward, which is in heaven. And that's the point of today. Somebody say, I want heaven to be in my life every moment and every day in Jesus' name. I do not live in the flesh. I live from heaven to earth. My citizenship. You think you live in a house? You think you live in a trailer? You think you live at the mission? Nah, you live in heaven. Boy, Heidi, everything changes right there. I want you to look at your neighbor, uh, look at your neighbor, and say, "Hey, hey, we living in heaven. Pretty cool up here. Everybody loves each other up here. There ain't no hurt up here. Nobody's sick up here. That's what I'm talking about. Everybody got cool hair like Brother Allen. Come on." We got no reason to grumble and complain and look at this old world, but we got to take the power back from this old world, and you can do it in Jesus' name. I'm here to tell you that the anointing and the power and the love of Jesus is in this house, and it's in, you, it's in your house. You brought it here. 
Your house came to our house so that our house can be the temple of the Lord, the treasure that God wants in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord God, all of the things, the darkness, come under the blood of Jesus today, and they stay under the blood of Jesus. I'm going to very briefly uh, uh, explain to us where the curse came from and remind us of all that, but we're not going to be connected to it anymore. We've got a choice to make, and I'm going to break. We can sever this connection from hell and from the curse and begin to live in the blessing. And you know what? You're doing it already in Jesus' name. A biblical blessing is an outpouring of God's grace, and a curse I'll tell you what, uh, oh, by the way, a couple quick announcements. We have got Jesus Journey coming up for women's classes are gonna, coming up. We're going to have day classes and night classes. There's a yellow sheet right over there in the middle table. Put your name on it. Even if you're not positive you can make it, put your name on it. We'll call you with some information in Jesus' name. The men are doing great. We had 25 men last Thursday night. Just a fantastic time in the Lord Jesus. It's at 6 o'clock. Come if you can. Uh, you don't have to sign up. Just be there and know that you're going to be loved in Jesus' name. Also, I want to pray for April. She's not here this morning, uh, but we love her. She did a conference uh, yesterday. Praise God for the women that were in that conference at another church. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for that. But we're still working on getting her, her gallbladder. I'm not working on anything, actually. I'm just praying. <laughs> I don't have my scalpel or anything like that. But she needs, a, she needs to get her gallbladder out. She needs to get the poison out of her. And God's going to do that in Jesus' name. April, we love you. We love you, Armando. And we thank you, Lord God, that we can do this together. And don't call me and ask me about no medication, by the way. I was, I was uh, at Jesus Burger yesterday with Stephanie, and we were preaching back and forth. And I and, uh, got this complicated uh, uh, definition of what a, a biblical curse is. But she just said... Anything in your life that's contrary to what the Word of God says about you is a curse. Any way that we're living or anything that's come into the context of who we are that is not what the Bible says is a curse. So let's don't do that. What do you think? All right. So we're going to have to process this thing and see what part of that needs to come out of me and needs to be broken. I, I unfortunately have a friend that goes to this church. And I've been dealing with him for about a decade now. And his name is Austin Medina. So I want y'all to pray for me because we're going to have to have, we're going to keep on going together. But I, 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 he's got a special, should we make him come out here? Austin, 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 Austin. Ah, oh, there he is. Okay, so I want to commend you for teaching me a little something about reversing the curse. Here's how he does it. Just say, have you ever got a random phone call from somebody that you didn't know? And it might have said, potential scam on there. All right, now, Austin loves it when scammers call him. He does. He answers the phone on the first ring, and he says, hello, Austin Medina here. And then he says, i got a little something for you. Uh, but I'd really like to come to your house and make a presentation. I need your home phone number and your social security number, and I'll be there in just a minute, okay? And you're not going to believe how good this blender works. Let me tell you about this blender, okay? It's a super blender, and you know what? You can blend all kind of stuff in there. The guy has not got a word in edgewise yet. Austin's still talking to him. You know, this guy calls to sell him a timeshare on an island that don't exist, right? Putting a, trying to put a scam on him. Now Austin is just scamming him back right there, okay? Oh, by the way, if you'd like me to waste 30 more minutes of your time, I want to tell you some more stories. You're not going to believe what happened to me. I was climbing this tree the other day, and I almost got injured, and I got poison ivy. I mean, just going on and on and on like this. Now, would you like to be a little bit like Austin? And any time the devil comes to see you, you would take his power back. This is what we can do when we reverse the curse in Jesus' name. So I, some people get that scam call and they go, I wish they'd quit calling me. The devil ain't going to quit calling you. Don't get annoyed. People got I, some, Somebody gets a call like that and they're all mad at the people. I said, hey, everybody needs a job. <laughs> they just happened to pick the wrong career, right? Can you tell them about Jesus? Hello, ma'am. I know you called me to sell me that timeshare. And uh, you know what? I'll take two of those. But while, while I'm getting my checkbook, let me tell you about Jesus, okay? We begin to reverse the curse in our real life. The first thing we got to decide is we ain't buying the timeshare, right? 
We ain't going to buy nothing from the devil. We ain't going to listen to the devil. Eve's problem wasn't that she, she, she ate the fruit. If she hadn't talked to the devil in the first place, she wouldn't have ate the fruit. Let's shut him down. Shut him down. Shut him down today in Jesus' name. Every little whisper that comes at us from darkness, we don't have to receive it. And we can break it right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Austin, for that wonderful example of, and that strategy on how to do that. Quick thinking about this. In Genesis 3, we see when man fell. That's when the curse came. There was not a curse until then. There was a great blessing. Walking in the cool of the day with, with God Almighty. Would you like to do that? We can do that again. We sure can. We can live in God's rest. We can live in his peace. But we've got to understand that that's when the fall came. That's when the darkness came. Don't expect this world to be perfect. Don't expect this world to be fair. When that fall came, everything turned upside down. And if we can get this perspective right now to say, you know what? This old world is just this old world. Stephanie says lost people act like lost people. Straight up, okay? So when we get that perspective, it, it lets this pressure come off of us to think that everything in my life's just got to work out perfect. That my finances just got to be perfect today. Boy, see, God's fine. His checkbook is long term. And it's all about treasures in heaven, not treasures in this old world in Jesus' name. And he's got us covered, and I know that he's doing that together today. In Genesis chapter 27, we've been kind of focusing on this because it's a personal thing. When Esau's blessing got stolen by Jacob, he cried out to his dad. Genesis chapter 27, 34, 36, and 38. And, 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 and this is pretty much what it says. He cries out three times, Dad, don't you have another blessing for me? Now, this is his earthly father that he's being really hurt by that things are just completely unfair about. And I know if I was to have you raise your hand and talk to you about your personal home life, did you get a, a, an eternal blessing of love from Jesus through your daddy? Probably not. Probably not. I know I'm a rare exception to that rule, but most of us didn't necessarily receive that love and that nurturing and this is what he longed for from his earthly daddy. And when we don't get that from our earthly daddy, there's an empty place inside of us that only the nurturing of the Father can fit in Jesus' name. Yeah. We can identify with Jesus a lot easier because he was a man, but then our daddies have hurt us or abandoned us sometimes, and we have trouble with the intimacy with our daddy in heaven in Jesus' name. Could we bring that back? That will reverse the curse so much. Men have hurt women so bad. Bad. And I'm here to tell you that I'm so sorry and I hurt with you and I hurt for you and I see it in the spirit and I see it in the flesh and I weep in that way. And sometimes we want to keep living from that place and just do the best we can. But all of that can change. You heard Genesis testimony about the new life and the joy that she's living in. And she was trying to live a Christian life all of those years. She wasn't living in sin. She was living in hurt. She reversed the curse, didn't she? All of us can reverse this curse by the grace of Almighty God in Jesus' name. And I'm very excited about walking through the curse part. And then the rest of this series, we're going to be talking about the different ways that the blessings are going to fall on us and are going to live in us in Jesus' name. But as Esau just began to cry, Daddy, give me another blessing. Daddy, give me another blessing. He couldn't do it. The earthly dad could not do it. Now, I know that all of us are in a different place. But I'll tell you one thing is for certain for every one of us, if we want to live free, we cannot look backwards. Thank you. Right. Preach it. Preach it. Philippians 3.13, Paul is talking about this thing. And he said, I do know these things. If you look at the beginning in verse 10, it's, it's, you could just read the whole thing, but it boils down to this. He says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have yet taken hold of it. In other words, he did not finish figuring out everything about Jesus and living exactly perfectly. This is what Paul is admitting, okay? Don't beat yourself up so much. Paul was able to walk in God's grace through these things right here. But he said, I have figured this much out. He said, finally, I figured this much out. Forgetting. But this thing I do, forgetting. Now, let's stop on this word forgetting. That doesn't just mean putting something out of your mind. I don't believe it just means putting something out of your mind that still haunts you from behind, that still tries to make you climb a hill that you don't have to climb and make you feel like you're not worthy. 
How many of you felt that way and just tried to put the voices out of your head? Okay, well, that's not forgetting, is it? I, you could forget it for five minutes, but then, bam, comes right back on you. Is that how we want to live? No. I think, it, I think maybe it's, it's more like a breaking. But this one thing I do, I break what is behind. I break what is behind, and then I strain forward to what is ahead. Now, that's, that's anticipation. That is hope right there. That is hope. So I break the power of yesterday, and I believe in the hope that is right now in Jesus' name. And I press on, press on, press on toward the goal to win in Jesus' name, toward the prize that God called me heavenward. You see, if we begin to just think about earth to earth and try to make everything perfect in this earth, how's that working out for you? See, we got the Trump card, and I don't mean the Donald Trump card. We got, the, we got, the, we got four aces, man. Okay, and that is heaven. The devil can say anything that he wants to you, and you can just, first of all, don't listen, but just remind him, I live in heaven, I live in heaven, you live in the, in the lake of fire. Ha, 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 I live in heaven, you live in the lake of fire. You got the power, and we can live this way together in Jesus' name. You whip that heaven card out. Anytime there's sorrow in you, any kind of, of, of fear that might come upon us, heaven card. I'm a citizen of heaven. It trumps everything. Jesus' love has made a way for me to be a citizen of heaven. It trumps everything, and I believe this is why he could look forward. Lane, you got that picture, that first picture that, uh, that, I, that I had over there? Let me, let me flip this off and see if this helps us see better. I went to go see Dr. Edgeman on Wednesday over in Sulphur Springs and sat with him and his wife. Uh, well, I don't know if you can see that too good. Can y'all see that very good? You can see that it's a clown, but can you, can you really see it? Can you see the difference between the smile on his face and the, and the sorrow in his eyes? How many of you live like that? How many of you not want to live like that? How many of you like want to have, be one person, one joyous person all the time? That guy's looking behind at the pain, whatever has hurt him, okay? And then he's trying to just put on what we would maybe call a religious mask, just trying to keep it all together for this moment, right? He's become an actor, hasn't he? All of us maybe have had times in our life where we've become actors, that we don't have to do that anymore. I want you to know that Brother Allen accepts you just like you are, just with everything that you've gone bone before and everything that's going on right now in Jesus' name. So does Preston, so does Ricky, so does all of our team around here in Jesus' name. I want you to start accepting you because Jesus accepts you just like that. Whatever it is, it's not too much for Almighty God. And he wants to, I've seen so many people become one person through, through just God's ministry to them in different places so that they're content and peaceful with themselves in Jesus' name. Get that nasty clown out of here, Lane. Get, get rid of that dude, okay? I'll vanquish you. You're out of here. Lord God, right now, we just come before you and we just say, if I've been looking backwards in my life, beating myself up, having a smile on my face and a, and a, and a burr in my saddle and a, a furrow on my brow and a lamenting in my eyes. I'm not going to do that anymore in Jesus' name because I'm going to trust you, Lord God, and I'm going to do what Paul said to do. I'm going to look forward and I'm going to believe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Put your hands together for Almighty God in Jesus' name. One huge thing that I find uh, prohibits us. Uh, Dee was a wonderful actress yesterday over at Jesus Burger. She did awesome, okay? And Stephanie was preaching, and Stephanie was trying to get close to me. I was on the other side representing her heavenly father, and Dee got right up in the middle. And you know what? She was playing some defense, okay? She, had her, she, she was up on her toes. She was moving her feet, okay? And uh, the, I couldn't get to her. I, daddy couldn't get to daughter, and daughter couldn't get to daddy because this, this thing was blocking, blocking. So if there's something blocking you from living that being whole, let's figure it out, okay? It ain't no big deal. It ain't nothing that the Lord can't handle in Jesus' name. A huge thing is unforgiveness, though, I'll tell you what. 
And it's not just unforgiveness of other people. It's unforgiveness of ourself. It's huge. It's huge. I'll, I'll take a little show of hands. How many of you have overcome this and you have forgiven yourself in Jesus' name? Amen. That's what I'm talking about. I've forgiven myself. I'm not going to beat myself up anymore in Jesus' name. I know that I, there's a lot more of you that can raise your hand. It's a lot more of us that can raise your hand. But if we're stuck in that place, let's, let's talk about it a little bit. The book of Matthew says that if we don't forgive those that sin against us, we can't be forgiven. Well, let's just take it one more step against us. Have you ever sinned against yourself? No. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever heard about being your own worst enemy? <laughs> yeah, because we decided these things would be good, and they didn't work out, Sheila. <laughs> it was uh, kind of a bad thing. All right, so, but then when we say, you know what, I'm not going to hold that against myself. God doesn't hold it against us anymore. The Bible says he only forgives our sin, but he forgets our sin. So let's remove this blockade today, right now, about us and, uh, us and ourself. Let's bow together. Lord God, we are going to live in the blessing, and we're going to uh, systematically defeat any curses that have been in us. We do it by looking forward and looking into glory. And we do it right now by not holding ourself as if we're beating ourself up and expecting something out of ourself. We did things wrong yesterday. I'll probably do things wrong tomorrow. But love keeps no record of wrongs, I'm reminded. And so in Jesus' name, what we do is we forgive ourselves and we release ourselves. That means I let myself off the hook. I let myself off the hook. I'm not going to let all of those things have power over me anymore. I'm going to release myself. I'm going to forgive myself. I, I sometimes find it valuable just to exhale when I'm forgiving and when I'm releasing. As if I'm breathing my very breath, bringing it to the Lord, to the cross in Jesus' name. I'm just exhaling all the pressure and all the worry that the world wants to put on us and all the imperfection and the striving. I just release it in Jesus' name because I can't handle it. I'm not smart enough or wise enough to handle it, but the Lord is in Jesus' name. So we bring it to you, Lord God, and we release ourselves in Jesus' name. I'm proud of you. Give yourself a hand. Love keeps no record of wrongs, but keeping a record of wrongs only hurts us. It beats ourselves up. Don't beat yourself up anymore in Jesus' name. Let's let the Lord have his way, and his way is all about love. Let's go to Matthew chapter 21. I love this part as I was praying about just some simple things, some powerful things to mention to you today about defeating any curses in our life. He led me to this scripture, Matthew 21, beginning in verse 18. Now early in the morning. Jesus was coming back from the city, and he was hungry. And all of his disciples were walking along with him. And seeing a lone fig tree at the roadside, he went to it, and he found nothing but leaves on it. And he said to it, Never again will fruit come from you. And at once the fig tree withered. Jesus cursed it, and it died. When the disciples saw it, they were astonished. And they said, How is it that the fig tree has withered away at once? And Jesus replied to him, I assure you and most solemnly say to you that if you have faith, that is personal trust and confidence in me, and do not doubt. Somebody say, do not doubt. <laughs> or allow yourself to be drawn in two directions. I love how the Amplified has said that, being double-minded. That's what the Bible is telling us right now. Do not doubt and allow ourselves to be drawn in two different directions. You will not only do what this has been done to the tree, but even, I say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. And let me tell you, that's two different directions. The Lord has very clearly told me something about that. Do not doubt. Do not be confused. And this thing about being torn in two different directions, especially in this day and age, is very clear to me. It's the difference between having faith and having fear. I can't talk you out of having fear. I can't talk you out of not looking backwards and, and lamenting things and beating yourself up. I can't do it. That's between you and the Lord. But, oh, I've seen so many of you rise in faith in Jesus' name and trust the Lord in, in situations. I've got another picture for you. Lane, would you throw this other picture up there? Let's see about this one right here. Now, I was over at Dr. Ms. Edgman's house, and Ms. Edgman has collected this art. Over in o Okanagawa, Japan, 
when they were ministering in Tokyo and over in Japan, God was doing miraculous things in their life. God took Dr. Edgeman off of the, off of the dusty uh, prairie of West Texas and put him in Tokyo and promoted him in all of these fantastic, unbelievable, supernatural ways. And while she was there, she's an artistic person, and she collected this art, and she's the one that brought to me that clown. I'm over at their house, and I'm, 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 I'm just needing a hug from a daddy from Dr. Edgeman. And while I was there, she showed me this art, and I said, wow, so many people live like that clown. But we don't have to anymore, do we, in Jesus' name? And then she, she showed me this. This is from an artist, uh, a West Texas artist painted this for her. This is an old farmhouse, pretty old plantation-looking far, farmhouse in West Texas. And that might be thought cotton fields right out in front. But if you look at that storm coming, you don't know if that storm has already gone over the house or whether it's coming to the house, do you? You don't know whether the storm has already passed you or if it's coming to you. Is that house standing or is it demolished? See, it don't matter whether the storm is coming or going. We're going to stand because the Lord is standing with us. And we will trust the Lord with all of our heart. We won't do things our way and lean on our own understanding in all of our ways. Whether the storm is coming or going, we will trust the Lord and he will direct our path. So many of you have lived this way or they're showing me how to live this way, beautiful family, in Jesus' name. But this comes, this house would not be tested if it was a spring day and it was 75 degrees, would it? See, Ricky told me this early the other day. He said, a man, a, a man it doesn't even know who he is until it's a time of testing. And men are judged by the time that they are tested in life. Do they live by faith or do they live by fear? Do they think the storm is coming and we got to go to the bunker and we, we got to sell everything we got? Or do we live by faith and say the house is going to stand? The house is going to stand. It's God's house in Jesus' name. I'm God's man. I'm God's woman. And I'm standing. And the storm ain't going to throw me off course. I know who I am in Christ Jesus. And that's how I'm going to live. I thank God. I thank you, God, that no matter whether the storm is coming or going, you have got us in Jesus' name. I want us to come and get a little bit personal right now. I'm going to tell you about a couple of blessings. Is that okay? Was that pretty cool in Genesis chapter 1? When God made Eve, now all of us boys better be going, yeah, as a matter of fact, every man in the house, get on your feet right now, get on your feet right now, get on your feet right now, put your hands together, and thank God for making women, yeah, yeah, thank you God for making the women, all of us boys are thanking God for the blessing that y'all are, that's right, you better smile at your wife every now and then, how about that, good job man. He said, be fruitful and multiply. And then he said, here is your vessel of multiplication. And boy, Heidi, he did a fine work with you women girls. He put y'all, he put love in our eyes for every one of you. That's a blessing, y'all. Love is a blessing. Love is so beautiful. And we take each other for granted instead of standing and cherishing each other and putting our hands together for each other. I'm putting my hands together for you, baby. Sweetheart, I'm, I'm, you're the blessing, baby. I'm talking about, woo, yes. Thank you, Lord, for, for, for multiplying. <laughs> That's a blessing in Jesus' name. Another great blessing came whenever God came to Abraham in chapter 12 of, Je of, of the book of Genesis. And he said, look, man, everywhere you go, I'm going to give you that land. And everybody that stands with you will be blessed. Stands with Abraham, stands with Israel, will be blessed. And if you don't, you'll be cursed. And we see that all over the land. And America has chosen to stand with Abraham, haven't we? Now there's some stuff going on around us that doesn't look like we're standing with Abraham. Let's just pray. Let's apply that scripture. The people that we might think are our enemies, I want to assure you they have broken hearts. They have hurt places. And they're not living from this place for whatever reason. They're living in rebellion. Just think of about a, a time that you may have lived in rebellion. We, 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 we don't need to curse them. We need to pray for those that are 
that are, that are not living that way right now. So let's just pray for America in this way. The blessing comes for this. If my people call by my name, will humble themselves and pray. Here comes the blessing. Oh, here comes the blessing, Prest. Here it comes, Bear. Here it comes. Oh. And repent from our sin and turn from our evil ways. Oh, America's got to do that. Huh? How about Alan Johnson doing that first? Yeah, I got to do that first. Then I will hear from heaven. See, it's heavenward right now. It's heavenward. <laughs> it's heavenward, devil, because I got the trump card on you. It's heavenward. I'll hear from heaven and I'll heal your land and I'll break all these curses off of you in Jesus' name. So, Lord God, right now we come releasing any political infighting in our hearts right now. We can't come before you, Lord God, with pure hands and a clean heart if we got a big old random fight going on inside of us. You've already won the battle. We trust you. We're standing with Abraham. And everywhere that he put his foot is blessed. And it is your territory in Jesus' name. And we're walking in that Abrahamic blessing today and forever in Jesus name I got this last thing for you my dad's legacy would probably be talking about these two things that he said thousands and thousands of times act to people he said son you keep the main thing the main thing what he was really saying is don't get distracted by the devil in your life don't get twisted by the circumstances of your life and give a power to them keep the main thing the main thing this isn't just a saying this is not just a mantra. This is an identity. It can get so deeply inside of us that I have got focused minds on the kingdom, focused eyes on the kingdom, focused eyes on love in Jesus' name. And anything that comes trying to pervert that or twist that or diminish that has no place in me because I've decided finally <laughs> to keep the main thing the main thing and do what my daddy said. Because he blessed me with this in Jesus' name. What else would he say, Sherry Morrison? He would say this. He would say, keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. You see, you can keep the main thing and the main thing for five minutes. That wasn't what Dad was talking about. He was talking about keep on keeping on. Brother Stan told me the same thing. One of the last words that he said to me. Well, he gave me one. The very last thing that he said to me was this. He said it from his death deathbed. He said, Alan, you preach too long. <laughs> Miss P and Kepi Tail would love that, wouldn't it? Then he had said, uh, he said this. He said, you got it going. And what he really meant was the Lord's got it going. Now you got to do the hardest thing. You got to keep it going. You got to keep it going. Anybody can start, but God is looking for finishers in Jesus' name. And that's you. That's what I see in your eyes. That's what I see in your heart. Rising up between every one of us is a finisher in Jesus' name. God has finished his work on the cross through his son Jesus, and we're coming and pointing it. And as my dad would say these things, keep the main thing the main thing and keep on keeping on, he would be pointing us into heaven. All of that is about a heavenward thing. So I'm going to tell this last story, and we're going to finish up. You ever feel like there's a, bl a, a, a blockade blocking the blessed life that you should live okay Jimbo you are have discovered in the four years we've been walking through journey together you have just discovered blockade after blockade and and thing after thing and 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 you've just been a uh, clay bro to to let God just keep breaking things off and this last thing with uh, uh, those of y'all that don't know but the Bill Fells have gotten uh, moved out of their house by a highway ex expansion and they are building another home now and the, the state of Texas had to take care of them and that was a trying time and then they're downsizing their life and I mean what are y'all they're like 45 years old so this is a traumatic thing in their life okay and so as when they're doing that like for all these years they've had these possessions you know and uh, they've kind of had power over us, huh? And we kind of say, well, I've got that in my collection or I've got that in my life. And, you know, they're not, that's not heaven. It's earth. And so they are disposing of these things. And at first it was hard, but now they're doing it with great joy. Great joy is following this because they're living from heaven instead of from earth. And any blockade from the devil is being broken off 
in Jesus' name. And this is what happened when Jesus was at that well and that Samaritan woman came. And we've heard many sermons about the Samaritan woman and all of those kinds of things. But guess what was blocking her receiving that living water? Why would a woman have five or six husbands? Well, why would I have five or six idols? Why would I have uh, six or eight things that are sin in my life? Or, or why would I have unbelief or fear in different ways, okay? It's the same thing. She just happened to have husbands, right? Because she was trying to get her need met. That's why she had all these husbands. She's trying to get her emotional needs met for man. It's okay. I don't, I don't harbor any, any disregard about that. That's, that's, that's what our flesh wants to do. That happened in the fall of man. That was the curse. But now you guys are doing it different. You're getting your needs met from heaven in Jesus' name. And so this is what happened when Jesus said, I see all of these things. She realized that her sinful, selfish lifestyle, trying to get her needs met from a hurt place. See, I'm not chunking no rock, and Jesus wasn't chunking a rock either. She was just trying to get her needs met from a hurt place, and we've all been in that place before. But when, he, when, she, when she ran back to town and she began to tell people about Jesus, the dam busted. And the blockade between her and Jesus was gone. And this is what's happening right now in Jesus' name. The dam is busted because her sinful lifestyle that started with hurt and led into a rebellion can be broken today in Jesus' name. And we can reverse the curse in Jesus' name. And that's what I want you to do in your life. Because that's why Jesus came to reverse the curse. And you're going to live in it and we're going to live in it together in Jesus' name. Everybody on your feet saying it like this. I reverse the curse. I reverse the curse. Bear, come get that guitar. Let's pray about this thing right here. This is what Jesus said. He said, I'm going to give you water like this. Everyone, whoo, Jesus, hallelujah. That dam is busting right now. Prayer warriors, take your spots. Get in your spots and get ready to lay hands on people and lay hands that the dam would be blasted and this water from heaven would flow in Jesus' name. Take your spot. Come on, Ray. Take your spot, Robert. Come on. Come on, John. Cheryl, come help me out in Jesus' name. I want to lay hands on people. And let God just take them over. Press, could you take that middle spot over there? Take that whole middle over there. Thank you, partner. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Frank and Frank, could you go get back there with, with uh, Frank, could you get back there with Press, please, in Jesus' name. Thank you. Matt, could you get back there with, with Press right there? So this is, what, this is what happened there with Jesus. And I believe this is what can happen today right now. The dam is busted. Somebody say, I'm breaking. The dam of fear and unbelief and yesterday in Jesus' name. And I'm receiving living water. Now this is your blessing. Every one of you treasure who drinks the water, the earthly water, will be thirsty again. But whosoever drinks the water that I give him will himself become a bubbling, flowing spirit of living water welling up to eternal life in Jesus name and what did the woman say the woman said this sir give me the water can I hear it from you sir give me the water sir give me the water hallelujah let's pray then you move Blake and Michelle y'all take a spot somewhere or the other Blake and Michelle y'all come up here and pray with me Lord God, I thank you so much, so for so, so much, Lord God, that we don't live in the curse. We don't have to live in the curse anymore. We are going to live in the blessing. Treasure is going to live in the blessing in Jesus' name. And so we ask you, Lord God, we just ask you to crush these dams of yesterday and unforgiveness in our life. We break them out in Jesus' name because we are looking forward and not backwards. And we're looking forward with the hope of Christ Jesus because we're citizens of heaven. And not only when we shatter this dam, this is what we're asking for, Lord God. Fill me. Somebody pray with me. Fill me. Fill me. Fill me with the living water. Fill me with the living water. Let it bubble out of my belly. Fill me with the living water. 
May it come out of my belly and change the people around me and change who I am and change the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.